This Gotham Filmers production is intended for a mature adult audience. It is rife with harsh language and East Coast humor that will not be agreeable with persons requiring preferential treatment or safe spaces. You are warned to click off to milder content at this time. Those of you remaining, welcome to Gotham, a serious town on a serious earth. Before long, his friends with similar 
paramedics working for me. A little too much tequila and they wouldn't shut up. Talked about how they worked with doctors and medical supplies. Many of these doctors had lost their licenses due to malpractice, narcotics or sex addictions, financial instability, whatever. Those doctors weren't off the books. Rich, select clean down desperate for more time when abandoned hospitals stuffed by contesting medical practitioners. Politicians and the like on both sides of the border prevented any oversight. No notice taken of healthy and documented immigrants whose organs were harvested to give these medical tourists more time. And that is why the border crisis was never solved. So exploiting cheap labor was just a cover. Drugs and prostitution was just a diversion. All the tough talk on the right was loud lip service. All the the amnesty and idealism on the left was just a court votes. You got footage of a cabal of wealthy families who paid for the trafficking and the tracking and capture of healthy immigrants, people who could uh, not go to the police, uh, people our government could not trace, register, or locate. Think about the north and south border on the 78th parallel, or how the southwest German border was before the Cold War ended, a white barrier of no man's land. Plus the flat mines of various types beneath the soil. Get near those fences, near those fences and you risk being shut or having your legs blown off. Now look at the Mexican border. See, the Trump administration put up a few walls, but most of it can be walked around, dug under or climbed over. It's wide open, for a reason. You make a valid argument. The uh, Mexican border is, well, not very, not very heavily militarized. Sharp rhetoric, some action, some legislation drafted, arguments for open borders or border fences, but no landmines, no snipers, no machine gun nests, low body counts. We've got the biggest military on the planet. The border can be fortified, tripwired, sensor networked, and laid with cameras in mere weeks. Dr. Carl Marcus, uh, Boston, Massachusetts, went into a tumult uh, when it was learned that uh, capital offenders were being legally sentenced to a mandatory organ donor program. Suddenly, you had uh, patients who might have died going home healthy with the organs of criminals. You have flash drives, uh, photographs, videos from these hospitals. There are few records kept in these places at all, and uh, patients enter under assumed names, often disguised. The uh, donors are being processed in the basement below. Your flash drives and body cams have footage to corroborate your testimony. You can change the border debate from here on. Name the offenders and beneficiaries. I had small cameras in my jewelry. My pen had a small camera with a microphone. 
as did my son Velasquez. So Slagari in thinking themselves secure that they let the occasional words slip that they benefited from a nameless, nationless person who would not be missed. People think a prostitute is stupid. Easy for me to act like I am lost in the bowels of these buildings and looking for the bathroom. Easy to capture a video of screaming teenagers in their final moments as they are gassed or cattle pup to death. Ah, uh, wait a minute. Um, uh, you said cattle pup. Do you, do you have footage of, of a gas pressurized piston popped in the head of a border crosser to euthanize them? I'm going to show you footage of an 11 year old boy held down to a gurney while a nurse with a piston pop skull fragments into his brain. Instant right run. With only the squeeze of a hand and every memory, every talent, every potential, everything that made this boy anything was wiped out. Within less than an hour, he was so much skin, bone, tissue and remnant on a metal table. His organs were either transplanted or put in dry ice for a transit to another clandestine hospital. All to benefit those who have the money to cling to life by denying it to others. You can imagine the uproar among the human rights groups. When you present that evidence to the world court, present video and photos to every news and wire service on the planet, investigations on every continent will mobilize almost instantly. The uh, reviews of doctors' medical records, travel records, affiliations with other doctors trafficking in human organs, sudden improvements in their clients' health, all of that will be under scrutiny. Every rich patient in these abandoned hospitals is a beneficiary of murder. Many will be arrested loud and public. Some will lawyer up fast. Others will roll over and threat anyone they get to get a deal for a minimum incarceration. Many of the companies these people manage to will experience power vacuums in their absence. Political toadies will carve up their fan foreign fiefdoms while these companies lose trade and market share value. But we may never know when this conspiracy began or how many benefited from those labeled expendable. There is no peace for those bewildered who died begging for their lives among those who saw them as a means to an end. Imagine being strapped to a gurney among others like you in a basement. All of you screaming into masks as your minds go void. Imagine how helpless, how useless, how abandoned those people felt in their final moments. That humans in this day and age could be capable of such a organized savagery of the American Soyo. This is why there is no resolution of the border crisis. Too many currently benefited from it. I have hours of still and video footage in my pockets. It will be seen around the world. No more peace and little lies. Tomorrow, the bodyguards of lies ends. I've got the evidence. Uh, Benita, are you still being followed by that woman? Do you see those men at all on the rooftops? After I left the internet cafe, I went through plenty of crowded venues and alleys. Took time but I shook them off. I can see my message where I left it an hour ago. Made certain to leave it in a public place. Near an American chain grocery store. Near an American bank. Near people dining at an outdoor cafe. Plenty of surveillance cameras to see me if anyone grabs me. I know that people don't care who disappears. But American shops with cameras made in time and see it all. Transmit it all. That footage can be support from those American companies by the Department of Justice, Homeland Security, anyone interested. Okay, now you drive out of town, take the side streets to the park, you know, the road past the water treatment plant. Uh, plant a tree cover there. You leave the car, move through the woods, heading north, northeast. Yeah, uh, there's a clearing. A moment later, a helicopter will drop down like a grasshopper. You just run to it. The man flying is getting you north of the border. There'll be a few refueling stops, but by sunrise, you can land in Manhattan. World Court has already made efforts to safeguard you from there. I don't know how to thank you for believing in me. So many in government ignored me. So many special interest groups said it was not their fight. Ah, no gratitude needed, sister. Only the knowledge that what we do is right now. Glance side to side. Do you see anyone at all? I lost them. I'm all clear. Gerard, I want to meet you all. This is the best night of my life.
sorry, the number you have reached is not in service. Please check the number or try your call again. This is a recording. We're sorry, the number you have reached is not in service. Please check the number or try your call again. Hey, Ms. Ray, tell me what you see. The regret is on. Damn, I just hope his mother car off. What? Why the hell did you have to stop at that internet cafe? It gave all the time in the world to plant the bomb on her car. Frank Fertel Algemin, sorry for your lost career. Thank you for believing in her. It's uh, it's it's all downloading onto the WGTM website now. All of it. Maps of the abandoned hospitals. Maps of the doctors and staff heavily masked, cages on wheels, rolling kids and adults in operating team, operating rooms never to be seen again. Wealthy patients drinking cocktails, eating five course meals, patronizing. Prostitutes watching sports on 96 inch TVs. A classic case of the rich literally feeding off the poor. Parasites playing God. How many local, state, and federal authorities in the United States knew that they benefit? Who bribed or coerced them? How far does this go? How far did. How are these operations financed? Who, who handle logistics, communications? Something this size, who cleans up all the loose ends? You're the man who believed in her. You're the man who opened the channel to her. You decide how far this goes. Tell, tell them what you know! <sighs> Elena Rojas was born in Santa Diablo on September 17th of 1990. Her mother was a prostitute thrown out of the stable, even before age 30. 
Your father could have been anyone. The Catholic school system provided the only real structure in her life. She began college in 2009. Didn't want to stroll the streets. Didn't want to die in an alley like her mom. Had a vision of becoming politically active in the legislature. Challenged the corrupt system from the inside. She finished law school in 2016. But no prospects there. Uh, it's like she said, she wasn't placed in society to be a lawyer, so, so she applies to the police department. And, uh, and after a few weeks of training, she's on urban patrol. And then Elanita gets the ultimatum. Gold. The gold or the silver. So she hands in her copper badge. Even fewer job prospects for her now. So she's down to the, uh, uh, she knows the streets. She knows she can get anyone's attention. And uh, she's down to the choice of prostitution or being homeless. Uh, if anybody's ever been to Siena Diablo, poverty literally is a crime down there. Their uh, anti-vagrancy laws are beyond draconian. So prostitution or homeless, hunk condominium or living under a bridge overpass. Now, she doesn't want to stroll the streets, but she doesn't have the connections to uh, frequent the hotels where the foreign businessmen stay. But she knows where the foreign businessmen Go to get their itches scratched. That kind of clientele gets you both money and information. She records her dates. Plenty of post-coil confessions. Plenty of requests for her to travel to wealthier cities, meet uh, wealthier clientele. I mean, you look. You'll see it soon. You look at the dates on the footage. Look at the global positioning. System locators. She's she's been up as far north as Vancouver, Canada, to as far down south as Cape Horn. Four years of footage, all chronological order, easily tracked. Look at the faces. Is anyone you know? Any places you've ever been? Now their world isn't so far away from yours. Not far away at all. So Elanita Rojas became Bonita Chavez to infiltrate it all. She uh, made it her cause, her case to prosecute, the, to unmask, to name, to locate wealthy medical tourists in America, Europe, Middle East, Asia. Those who benefited from the murders and the organ harvesting of immigrants from south of the U.S. border. She died, but not before transmitting her story all over the planet from an internet cafe in Santa Diablo. Elanita Rojas, end of watch. July 31, 2021. 03 48 hours. Never, never forgot. This is Moira Somerville for the BBC. Simultaneous arrests in London of persons identified from video footage by Bonnie to Chavez. These medical tours with any number of health maladies found a rapid return to help at the sacrifice of nameless border crossers in the United States. Undocumented persons thought to be those that would miss were killed for their organs. She went undercover as a prostitute and used a variety of cameras and microphones to catch still and video images. Captured to be killed for the health benefits of rich medical tourists.
tourists from the United States and every other kind of the, on the globe who journeys to clandestine hospitals for a rapid return to health. No waiting in lines for months or years for donating organs. Their money not only let them jump the waiting lines, but benefit from the slaughter of forgotten border crosses in, into the United States. I did advise my video footage from the murdered undercover journalist Bonita Chavez. In Russia, a coordination of FSB and militia advanced on his place of business to arrest one Fyodor Roskilnaya for his crimes in the United States. When Roskilnaya ran to the heliport of his building, his legs were shot down to a long third. He was then thrown several miles of the eighteen flights of stairs, while a list of charges was read to both him and the local media outlet covering the event. Following his compulsion to both confess and testify, Vaskanaya, who be handed over to American officials to stand show trial and then sit in country club prison with more comforts than American working class persons can afford. This is Das America with more blatant truth that you can't handle. From the Seattle, Washington Liberated Press, as a feminist, I ask what society is plagued by that forces a woman into prostitution that she might be God in existence and uncover evil around her? And worse, and worse, how could so many American women in these photos live with themselves knowing that children were murdered so they can wear young skin and hair? <sighs> you know, before we uh, go into a commercial interruption, I'd like to talk about uh, a little phrase so many of us heard growing up. The only thing evil needs is for good people to thrive, is for good people to do nothing. Plenty of comic book superheroes pontificate on phrases like that. But here in the real world, we have to wonder the cost of that kind of idealism. We, uh, we don't hear many critics of the nuclear industry since a miscreant did a break job on Karen Silkwood's uh, coop. We may or may not hear much on the border issue now that Elenita Rojas got incinerated in her Mercedes compressor. How many other champions against the ills of society won't be here next month? Bribed, discredited by lies or murdered into silence, how many people will champion any cause knowing they might end up sealed in a barrel that will be burned or dropped into a river? How many want to be the lone voice of reason knowing they'll be dragged behind a 4x4 four four to the dismembered? In this era, is it unwise, is it unwise to be a contrarian to, the, to oppression and corruption? In this era, we can envy the heroes and pity the nation that needs them. This is Howlin' Mad Halloran, WGTM 99.9 on your FM radio dial and streaming video from Gotham City. I've got nine lines. Open. It is hours till sunrise. After this commercial, you tell me what's on your mind. Are you tired of diving to the floor every time you get insurance? Does the inside of your house look like it got hit with a sledgehammer? If so, consider new polycarbonate custom windows by HomeDefender.com. Our technicians will arrive in military surplus vehicles to measure and later install windows layered in polycarbonate and shatter resistant transparent mesh. When bullets come knocking, they won't be passing through and jeopardizing you. Visit homedefender.com or call a local Gotham office at 555-D-E-F-E-N-C-Z.
Hey, I like these pet videos. Rachel is so cute. Too bad I tried to find any of the you got from your last pets. Great thing about pets is they never get in any trouble. You're not going to have Officer Flaherty hauling you downtown because your pet knocked over a liquor store. Pets are upstanding citizens.